Welcome to this presentation on SPSS. So this is going to be a very brief overview of what SPSS is and what SPSS can do for you in terms of data analysis. In this presentation, we're going to look at the interface that makes up SPSS. We'll also look at how to import data into SPSS. And then we'll look at um, some basic functions, especially the explore function in SPSS, which allows you to get an overview of the data or a best eye view of the data before you narrow down your analysis. So what is SPSS? SPSS is a statistical package that is used for data analysis. It was initially called Statistical Package for the Social Sciences until it was acquired by IBM Corporation and then it became IBM SPSS Statistics. So when you first open um, IBM SPSS Statistics, what you'll see is uh, this spreadsheet-like interface. And then at the top, you have your menu bar, uh, which is pretty much standard. You have the file, you have edit and view, and then you have other drop-down menus that we will explore uh, throughout this uh, series of videos. And then at the bottom, you have what is known as the data view and the variable view. Right? So these are also very important, and we will see when or how to use them once we import data. So there are two ways to get data into SPSS, right? So one way is to manually enter your data, and another way is to import a, a file that was saved maybe in an Excel uh, format, right? Or a CSV file, a comma-separated value file. Once you open the variable view, right, supposing that you are going to be entering your data manually, you have to enter your variables first. So the first thing you have to do is first to define your variables. Right? So under the variable view, we can see that we have the name. This means the name for your variable, the type of variable it is, and other. these are the other characteristics uh, for the variable. Right? So we'll just look at a few of them. Let's suppose that uh, in your research, one of the variables um, that you are collecting data on is, let's say, gender. Right? So the variable name is uh, gender, okay? So that's our variable name. So SPSS comes up with default characteristics for that variable, right? So you can see that when you enter the variable name, SPSS says it's a numeric variable, um, the width, uh, then decimals, and other characteristics. So the variable characteristics that I want to look at are the type, the label, the values, and the measure or the level of measurement. Uh, when you enter a variable into SPSS, right, you have to choose the type of variable it is. Okay, so you can see that there are many types of variables that you can uh, choose from. To make the analysis easy for SPSS, right, we usually code um, gender as a numeric variable, right, and where, whereby we will assign uh, a, a nominal value such as one to mean male and two to mean female, right? So the variable label tells us uh, or gives us more information on what that label or what that variable is. For instance, you can write, this can be, what is your gender? Okay, so this just tells us uh, or gives us more information on the variable, right? Because the variable name is it's, it's an, an, an abbreviation of some characteristic that we were interested in uh, in our, let's say, our questionnaire, for instance, right? So on our questionnaire, the question might have been, what is your gender, right? And then the responses are the values, right? We can code our values, male and female, um, or other. So that's the value is one. The label, we say one means female. Then enter. So that means that the value label one means that that individual is female. So SPSS will recognize one to mean female. Okay, and the value two to mean male, and then maybe three to mean other. Right, so okay. So we have defined our variable into three values, male, female, and other. Under the column which says decimals, we don't need the decimals, 
there because we just want it as 1, not 1 1.00. SPSS is asking us to define the level of measurement. There are basically four types or four levels of measurement in, uh, in statistics. We have the nominal, the ordinal, and then we have ratio and the interval, right? So SPSS just combines ratio and interval and calls it scale. But for gender, we know that gender is, is nominal. Okay, so once we've done that, we, def we have defined one variable, right? We can then go on to define even more variables, right, um, if we want to. But what I want us to do will, is to import a CSV file uh, that already has data and variables on it. So once we have entered your variable, if you go to data view, you'll see that your variable now appears in, in your data view uh, and it says gender, right? It means that every variable you enter will then be entered into these uh, columns, right? And then every row under data view, right? Each of these rows is a case, right? Or a participant or a patient that took part in your, in your study. So the next thing we will do is to import a data set. Right, so SPSS can import several types of data sets or data set uh, formats. So it can come in the form of an Excel file or a comma separated value file. And also you can import uh, a data file that has been stored um, with the IBM SPSS uh, proprietary name, which is SAV. So go to file, import data. Data is on the desktop in a file called data. So this is the data set I've created for the purposes of this um, illustration. Right, so you can see that it's a .sav file. So that's a S an SPSS file format. So this is the file, open. Okay, so that's our data imported health status. So the file is called health status. Um, so this is our, our data view, right? So you can see that we have our variables, we have gender, we have um, a variable called X benefit for us to know what this variable is, right? You you can have your case on it. It tells you physical exercise is beneficial. So that's a statement which says physical exercise is beneficial, and then the patient or participant will respond um, by saying maybe strongly agree, disagree, and so forth, right? So it's a, it's it's rated on an ordinal scale, and it's a, it's a it's basically a Likert scale. SBP that's systolic blood pressure. Exercise, so that the variable name is exercise and the, the variable label is do you exercise regularly? Okay, and then we have weight in kilograms and then height in meters. So this is our variable or rather our data view and each of these rows is a participant, right? So we have participant number one, we have their gender, their gender is coded as a number, right? So one here is male, um, and then is exercise beneficial? It's also coded as a number on a Likert scale. And we'll see what these numbers mean once we look at the variable view. And then we have systolic blood pressure, which is 127. This is measured in millimeters of mercury. And then we have, do you exercise regularly? So it's a yes or no. Um, zero means no and one means yes. And then the weight and then the height of that individual. Okay, so that's the data view. And then under variable view, now we can get more information on the variables that appear on the data view. So the first one is gender. So the question or the label is what is your gender? And the variable was coded as, so we have male and female, right? So zero is female, one is male, okay? And then it's a nominal variable. Right, so X benefit, the label, physical exercise is beneficial. So that's a statement. And then the participant responds by, right, so strongly disagree all the way to strongly agree. Systolic blood pressure, that one is straightforward. The next one is exercise, which says, do you exercise regularly? Right, so again, it was coded uh, numerically. Zero means no, one means yes. Right, and then we have weight in kilograms, we have height in meters. 
Okay, I'll go back to data view. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to some of these, uh, especially the coded variables, if you want them to appear um, with their labels on, then you go to view under toolbars, you go to uh, data editor, and then you'll get this menu here. And then there's this icon here, which has a one and an A on it. Uh, if you click on it, you'll get the uh, variable labels. So you can see that I can switch between the labels and the codes, right? Right, participant number one is male. They strongly disagree with the statement that exercise is beneficial. Their blood pressure is 127. They don't exercise. Their weight is 77 and their height is 1.82. From the weight and the height, we can get their BMI, right? And see if maybe there is a correlation between, uh, let's say, uh, BMI and blood pressure, for instance, or whether there is a, a relationship or an association between someone who doesn't exercise and uh, perception of exercise. Lastly, let us look at the explore function. So what the explore function will help us to do is have um, a best eye view of the data before we focus our data analysis, right? So to go to the explore function, we go to analyze, right? And then we go to descriptive statistics. Then we click on explore. So once you do that, you'll get this uh, dialog box, right? Um, and what SPSS is asking you to do here is to choose the variables that you want to run your explore function on, right? So to choose a variable, just click on it and then I click on this arrow to the which takes you to the dependent list. Or you can drag and drop um, your variables, right? What we, I want us to do is to make it easy. Let us look at one, one of the variables, okay, or two. Okay, let's choose, for instance, a continuous variable like weight and let's take gender, right? And okay. Right, so what you get is another window. Okay, so this is called the output window. So what the output window does is it shows you your workflow, right? So it, it basically shows the results of your analysis and the commands that you went through to get that uh, that result, right? So it's it's like a log. So it's a, it's a good way to keep track of your work. The explore function, remember that we ran explore on gender and weight, right? So what we have here, the first output says case processing. So it gives us the number of cases, right, in our data set. So we have 63 cases. They are none missing, right? So it's a complete set of, of cases. And then the second um, table there is for descriptives. On it, we have the weight and what is your gender? Remember that those are the two variables that we chose for this analysis, right? The mean weight is 72.68 with a standard error of 1.22. Uh, we can see that the median is 73 and the standard deviation is, is 9.6. We can see that the minimum weight in this data set, right, for all 63 uh, individuals, the minimum weight is 53 and the maximum weight is 92 uh, kilograms. The range, of course, is uh, 39, right? So remember, range is the maximum minus the minimum. And then the interquartile range is 14, right? So the interquartile range, we get that by subtracting the uh, first quartile number uh, from the third quartile. So that gives us the interquartile range. Uh, and we also have skewness and ketosis. So all these values are important when you are dealing with a continuous variable such as weight. You have to be careful because SPSS also gives the same values for the variable gender or what is your gender, right? So it is important to know that when it comes to what is your gender, male, female, this output doesn't make much sense. Right, so for example, the mean is given there, but we know that uh, you can't really get mean for, for gender, right? It's male and female, so you can't calculate a mean for that, right? Because gender is a nominal variable. 
the next output that SPSS gives us in the explore command is, is a box plot, right? So we can see that um, we have a box plot there for weight, right? Box plots, again, only make sense when we are dealing with a continuous uh, variable, right? Where we have the minimum, so this is the minimum weight, right? Remember, it was given as uh, 53, and then the maximum weight, right? And then we have Q1. This is the first quartile, second quartile, which is the median, third quartile, right? So this is called the five number summary because we have five numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and we call this a box plot. Again, this is a box plot, an attempt by SPSS to give us a box plot for gender. You can see that it's, it doesn't make sense and um, it's uh, very much useless for our purposes. So what this basically means is SPSS will give you a whole lot of output when you run your analysis. And some of those outputs are uh, useless and they don't make sense. That means that you have to understand the basics and the concepts of statistics in order to be able to interpret the data. Knowing or being able to use SPSS does not mean that you understand statistics. Right? So first of all, you have to understand statistics and then use SPSS to get your analysis um, and then interpret them in light of the concepts and principles that you have learned in statistics. So in this presentation, you basically learned what SPSS is. We looked at the interface uh, for SPSS. We looked at how to import data and we looked at how to use uh, the explore function and the output that you get by using the explore function in SPSS. If you find this useful, uh, subscribe to the channel like the video and share it and leave a comment or question below.